Thank you for joining us here again on Pray TV. I'm so glad that Charlotte is here with me. Charlotte, just greet our folk. It's always my joy to be with you. It's always just uh, encouraging to hear from you. Uh, we have had a little bit of problem with the new Facebook format, but we're hoping to get that solved. Uh, so we thank you for your patience with us if we have not been as regular getting out the program over this last week or so. But uh, we are on it and we'll do our best to uh, get it to you. Blessings. Well, I appreciate all of your efforts and there's other people that we are drawing on for their help and their insight as things change. We know we live in a time and a world of change and there are many, many things that are changing about the delivery mechanisms that we have and we hope to be able to be connecting with you and if you would help us by just sending to some of your friends some of our programs maybe we'll get back on track because we had quite a number of people that were participating with us and somehow with this new program change it's been kind of a little bit of a challenge to be able to get that participation back up as far as the numbers of participators are concerned but you're here and you're watching and we're grateful we're looking today at luke chapter 12 verses 27 through 31 and we're reading from the new international version of the bible as you know, we read from this portion the three verses previous to this yesterday, but I just felt like it was a good set of verses for us to continue on the theme. And so it says here, Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things. And your father knows that you have, that you need them. But seek first his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Charlotte, maybe you just bring us a little comment on this, and we'll prepare our hearts for prayer. I was thinking, Brand, how significant these verses are, especially in the light of so many people who really have suffered economically during this time. There are a number of people we know have lost jobs who are really up against the wall, so to speak. And at first glance, you may feel, is this really true? You know, will God really back this up? But I know that as we seek Him first, as we come asking Him, he will meet our needs. And the Bible says not only meet our needs, but meet them according to His riches and glory. I was refreshing myself just last week with the story of George Mueller. And I hadn't realized that he lived a life actually very far from God when he was a very young man. And that when he came to the Lord, he came with full surrender. And he just depended on the Lord. As you know, he set up an orphanage for children and never asked for any money for it, actually. But they depended on God and prayed every day, just prayed the meals in for the children. And he saw God move in miraculous ways. And I believe that God is very intent on letting us know once again that he is truly our source. He is the source of all provision. And so we want to especially pray for some of you today who really are feeling this lack very keenly. And that as we do seek the Lord, as we do put his kingdom first, he will supply all of our needs. So let's just take a look at this portion of scripture one more time as Charlotte has given us a little counsel concerning this because it is vital that we really understand 
how God is going to work, how he is going to make his way, how he is going to give provision, and he will do it for you. It's not as though he cares for these flowers or birds or any of these natural things and doesn't care for you. He does. But he has given us a certain ability to inquire of him and to get his counsel and to be able to know how to find what he is bringing as a means, as a way. And so he expects us to be able to just lean into him a little bit. So we're going to pray this, and we're going to read it, and let's just look to the Lord one more time as we peruse these verses. It's Luke chapter 12, verses 27 through 31, and we're reading from the New International Version of the Bible. It says, Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagans, the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek the kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Charlotte, would you just take us before the Lord and bring us into this spirit of prayer as we commune with him and really encourage each other. We are, we're just like you. We're not that different. We need his graces and his encouragement in this season as well. Charlotte, lead us, please. Lord, we want to lift up, especially those today that are really feeling, God, the economic hardships of the coronavirus and or other adverse circumstances, Lord, that have crowded into their lives. Father, we know, God, that we have needs, Lord. We have basic human needs, and you acknowledge that here in this passage of Scripture. But Father, we seek you first. Lord, it seems sometimes so counterintuitive, Lord, and as human beings we get so focused on our own needs. But Lord, today we seek you first. We seek your kingdom, Lord. We say, Lord, you have promised to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask for each person, Lord, who may have lost their job or who is ill, Lord, or a number of situations, Lord, have really taken over in their lives, Lord. We pray today, God, that your spirit will give them hope, Lord, and as they join us even in these prayers, Lord, and continue to pray that, Father, you will meet their needs because you know the needs. And you care, Father. You care about your children. You care deeply, Lord, and you love us. So we just thank you, God, that we will hear of answers to prayer, God, of needs that you have taken care of even this very week. In Jesus' name, amen. And Heavenly Father, we just are so grateful that you are our partner in this. You make a way for each and every person in the most difficult of times, in the greatest struggle of our circumstances, you are there. There is nothing that gets by you, Lord. I just pray that we will be able to settle our souls from all of the anxious ways so that we can walk humbly before you. We can seek your kingdom first with the recognition that you will make a way. You will make a way. 
So Holy Spirit, we thank you in advance and we pray, Lord, that you will just bless us in this hour, that you will take us more and more into that quiet place of comfort because we are comforted by you. You make the way and we are comforted by your care for our souls. And we pray blessing upon each one who's praying with us and walking this pathway of prayer and intercession and pursuit of you. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're doing your work, you're accomplishing your paths, and our lives are being guided by your Holy Spirit every day, every way we go. Bless your people, and we thank you for it in Christ's name we pray. Amen.